This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence. What is going on, everybody? My name is John Solo, and the holiday season is finally upon us, a fact that excites me for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, it means that 2020, the year that our gods forsook us, is almost over, and secondly, it's that time of year where some of the weirdest traditions from cultures around the world come back into the spotlight. Last year, we talked about Krampus, the European goat demon who stuffs the naughtiest kids into a sack and takes them back to hell, where he tortures, kills, and eats them. But this year, I want to explore a tradition that may be just as horrifying. And no, I'm not talking about the antiquated practice of leaving out milk and cookies for Santa. Listen, it was a nice gesture in the beginning, but the guy's like a thousand years old at this point and visits around 500 million houses every year. Even if Santa's a god, which he very well might be, there's no way his digestive system can handle all that sugar and dairy. That's why I leave stool softener and butt wipes every year. And guess what? He always takes them. Now over in Iceland, they have a similar but very different tradition. Instead of leaving out delicious poison for a man who's already at risk of losing one of his feet, children leave out a single shoe for a group of dwarves called the Yule Lads to put little presents in. Sounds like a cute custom, right? Kind of? Hopefully you don't think it's too weird because that's only the tip of the iceberg. And while their shenanigans may sound mostly harmless, they weren't always that way. Throughout the centuries, the Yule Lads have evolved from being feared, bloodthirsty monsters to celebrated guests, and today, I'm gonna tell you why. But first, let's talk a little more about their modern characterizations because you're gonna wanna hear them. As always, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons if you wanna support the channel and get content like this delivered to your sub box every week. And now, the messed up origins of the Yule Lads. So let's start off what may be the weirdest episode of Messed Up Origins to date by talking about the tradition that celebrates these lads. Over in Iceland, anyone who believes in them, typically children, will put a lone shoe on their windowsill starting on the night of December 11th and will leave it there for 13 days. Then every night for the next 13 nights, one of the mischievous Yule lads will show up to both cause some trouble and leave a present behind. At least if you were good this year. If not, instead of a small toy, clothes, or some candy, they'll give you a rotten potato. And you're gonna be thankful for it, Derek, you little sh**. And to those wondering what kind of mischief these mad lads cause, get a load of this. On the first night, December 11th, Sheep Coat Claude will make his stop, and he likes to sneak into the barn to drink directly from the sheep. Unfortunately for him, he has two wooden legs that make it almost impossible for him to bend down and reach the rudders. Or whatever sheep have. Do sheep have udders? Evidently they do, and this one has a bra. I learn new things every day with this job. Now on the second night, December 12th, the lad named Gully Gawk comes out of the ravine he lives in to sneak into your barn and drink all the foam from your buckets of milk. Not the milk itself, mind you, just the foam. That's that good good. A lad called Stubby will stop by on the night of the 13th. This unusually short fella steals your cooking pan so he can eat any food that's left in them. Then on the 14th comes Spoon Licker. He's tall, thin, and wants to lick any remaining crumbs off your eating utensils. His brother Pot Scraper is next. On the 15th, he'll sneak into your house and steal any leftovers you have sitting in pots like soup. Then we have Bull Liquor stopping by on the 16th. Are you noticing a theme here? This one hides under people's beds. Then when they put down their asker, which is a wooden bowl used for all meals, he'll eat anything left on it. After Bull Liquor comes Door Slammer, the first lad who isn't obsessed with stealing food that would otherwise go in the trash or to stray animals. On the night of the 17th, he'll run through your house, slamming every door in his path just to be a jerk and wake you up. Make sure to keep an eye on your skier when the 18th comes along, because that night, Skier Gobbler a lad obsessed with the Icelandic yogurt will devour every morsel he can find in your house until he pukes. And to those who enjoy food that's a bit more savory than yogurt, you're not safe either. Because on the 19th, you'll be visited by Sausage Swiper. He hides in the rafters and steals the smoked sausages that are hanging up. On the 20th is when you're really gonna wanna be looking over your shoulder though, because Window Peeper will be looking for things to steal and maybe watching you shower. Okay, I added that last bit, but if the guy's whole thing is looking through windows, he's bound to see a big old booty or two. Then we have doorway sniffer sliding through on the 21st, but unlike his name implies, he doesn't just go around sniffing people's doorways. He actually uses his long nose and amazing sense of smell to seek out leaf bread, a crisp flatbread that Icelanders typically eat in the Christmas season. Now on the 22nd, watch out for the meddlesome meat hook. In the olden days, he'd use his giant hook to reach down the chimney and steal any meat that families were cooking over the fire, but now he tries to steal it right off the table before Christmas dinner. And last but not least, we have Candle Stealer, who usually ends up being 
being Kid's favorite because he brings the biggest present. On the night of the 23rd, he'll quietly follow children around town and around their houses looking for candles to steal and eat. You see, back in the day, candles were made out of fat, so they were edible. Homie wasn't just a freak who eats wax. But if you thought that was the end of the Yule family, you've got another thing coming. Because just like every other living creature, be it human, animal, or Havzi, the Yule lads have a mom, a dad, and even a family pet. Only unlike your mom, dad, and pet, there's eat children. Starting with the mother, because she's definitely the most important, her name is Grilla, and she's ugly as hell. She lives in a cave deep in the lava fields of Northern Iceland, and she can detect when children aren't behaving all year long. Some accounts of Grilla describe her with 300 heads, and on each one are three eyes as black as hell that she spies on children with. She's got deformed nails on every finger, goat's horns, giant ears, a wispy beard, and rotten teeth. So what happens to the kids who end up on her naughty list? Well, throughout the Christmas season, she hunts for them in the mountains, and when she catches them, she throws them in a sack, takes them home, boils them alive, then makes stew. And the naughtier the child, the better it tastes. Grilla is also said to have hooves instead of feet, long tufts of hair hanging from her brow, and a whopping 15 tails with 100 bags tied to each one and 20 shitty kids in each bag. That means every Christmas, she takes home 30,000 kids to make dinner out of. You think she's set for the whole year? I mean, it's not like she's eating the whole thing herself. She does share it with her husband, Lepa Ludi, who funnily enough is mostly known for being a fat, lazy fart who does nothing around the cave except for eat and sleep. So in other words, he's Gunther. And actually speaking of black hairy animals, I've got to mention their pet, the Christmas cat or Yule cat. He's a massive cat, at least as big as a tiger, that hunts down anyone in Iceland who doesn't receive something new to wear for Christmas and eats them. Now I have a feeling that your head just went to the same place mine did. That is, after picturing a small child being horrifically ripped apart by a giant cat, you thought, hey, that's a pretty good way for a parent to give a kid socks for Christmas without them crying like a baby. But in reality, that wasn't why the Yule Cat was invented. It turns out that sheep farmers used it to motivate their workers to finish processing the autumn wool before Christmas. And you gotta admit, that's a good incentive. Hey, if you don't get your work done, a bunch of cute little kids are gonna die before Christmas. You don't want that on your conscience, do you? Couldn't you just hire more people so I wouldn't have to stress about it? No, I can't. I totally could. All you've got to do is make sure you don't hire any sociopathic farmhands and you're good to go. But you know what? Since we're already kind of on the subject, let's talk about the hilarious and horrific origins behind these crazy characters and the dozens of other Yule lads whose more extreme pranks have led to them being phased out. So in order to explain where the Yule Lads came from, we first have to know where Grilla came from. After all, she is the one who gave birth to them. You see, the folklore behind Grilla extends way farther back than anyone else in her family. She's actually mentioned in the Prose Edda, a 13th century collection of Norse mythology and Old Norse poetry, but they describe her a bit differently. Instead of hunting down naughty kids or having anything to do with Christmas really, she wandered around town like a bottom feeder asking parents to just give her their disobedient children. And as appealing as this method might be for disposing of unwanted kids, and definitely one I would use if I ever caught my son Fortnite dancing, parents usually turned down the offer and would either give her other food or just chase her away. Back then, she also lived in a small cottage on the edge of town. Which town? Your town. Though she was eventually forced out by a mob of angry parents, which is why she lives in the lava fields these days. But now let's talk about her sons, the Yule Lads, because while most folks nowadays find their tradition to be a mostly cute and comical way to introduce some magic into their kids' Christmas, Christmas memories, they did not start out that way. Originally, the Yule Lads weren't these harmless guests who just ate the food you didn't want and then ran away, but instead were boogeyman-like characters who wanted nothing else but to hurt and scare children. Now, in reality, historians believe that stories about the Yule Lads originated from encounters with the homeless during the harsh Iceland winter. It's thought that every year around Christmas time, when it'd get real nippy out, they'd break into houses to get warm and steal any scraps of food they could find. But similar to Grilla, parents used to tell their kids stories about the Yule Lads to scare them into behaving. That is, until 1746 when the Danish government stepped in and officially banned parents from using these stories as disciplinary tools, presumably because they didn't want entire generations of citizens growing up traumatized. Of course, parents continued to tell the stories because how could the government possibly enforce that rule, but they did get tamer and tamer over time. So who were these lads that were supposedly so traumatizing? That would depend on where you ask, because different areas believed in different things, from the number of dwarves to the dwarves themselves. For for example, some towns were visited by Hemtosser, who you may as well call Upskirter. I'm sure you can figure out what his pastime was without me painting a picture. That being said, I decided to paint a picture. 
just to be safe. Another freaky fellow was called Lung Splatter, and his bloody lungs hung on the outside of his body for him to beat children with. Sadly, I think painting a picture of this one would get me demonetized. And same goes for our next guy, Small Balls. Yes, that is literally the name of one of the Yule Lads when you translate it into English. And while we don't know exactly what he did to cause trouble, the fact that everyone knows him by Small Balls is not a good sign. Now my personal favorite, or just the one I think is funniest, it'd be kinda weird if he was my favorite, Shitlicker. That's his name. Shitlicker. Don't get any ideas though. He only licks cow shit. And believe it or not, there were more Yule Lads than this. A lot more. Sadly, we don't have time to go through all the names they found over the centuries, but here are some of the highlights. There's Ugly Face, Cat Stealer, The Idiot, The Idiot's Child, Trash Heap, Runny Nose, Smoke Gulper, and of course, Fat Gobbler. They're no Brady Bunch, that's for sure. So you can think of those dwarves as Grilla's other children. See, she was actually married twice before Lepaludi, though all we know about her former husbands is that she ate them. And of course, that those marriages resulted in a few dozen children apiece. But the question remains, what happened to those children? I mean, yeah, I can see why Small Balls and Shitlicker had to go, but there were plenty of other names on that list that weren't so vulgar. Why did they get left by the wayside? Well, that partly stems from the first time the Yule Lads were mentioned in writing. A poem written during the 18th century by Jon Samson Arsen describes 13 Yule lads walking together and says they're secretly mean to the young children. We don't know if this poem had any influence on the tradition settling on that special number 13 or vice versa, but we do know that by 1846 it was locked in. Because in author Jon Arneson's collection that was published that year, he explains the Christmas lads tradition, which by the way is the first time they were ever given such a title, and says there are 13 of them because the first comes 13 days before Christmas. Now the specific dwarves who visited continued to vary for the next several decades decades, but in 1932, Johannes Urkotlum released a collection of Christmas poetry that changed everything. In his poem titled The Yolas Feinarnir, which translates to the Santa Clauses, the Icelandic name for the Yule Lads, he describes their entire background and names the 13 visitors you can expect around Christmas time. Not only was this the first time that anyone had published the individual names of the Yule Lads, the book also sold extremely well, which led to pretty much everybody reading the poem and accepting those names as canon. Though apparently it wasn't until after World War II that the Yule Lads got further Santified and started leaving gifts after making their mischief. But now, Solo fam, I have a question for you. If you were one of the Yule Lads, what would your name be and what kind of mischief would you make? No doubt in my mind, I'd be Pipe Clogger. I'd go down to the village to use their toilets because I hate going outside, and since I could only do it once a year, it would always end up being a real nasty sh** and clogging their pipes. You're welcome for the mental image. Now, while you're thinking of your answer, let me tell you about this week's sponsor. It's no secret, Solo fam. Christmas is upon us, and 2021 is right around the corner. So with this chapter coming to a close, it's time to start thinking of the ways that you're gonna level up in the new year. There is no shortage of options. After all, human beings are innately flawed creatures, but I'm happy to say that one flaw you don't have to live with is not having a website. What's that? You didn't know that was a flaw? Well, it is when there's platforms like Squarespace out there making the creation process so easy. I mean, check this out. They have dozens of award-winning pre-made templates to get you started, and each one of them is customizable to the gills. You can add whatever text, video, and pictures you want, a feature I take full advantage of on my own website, MessedUpOrigins.com. I've got a page on there where you can buy my favorite resources for researching these old stories, another page containing multiple galleries full of fan art from the Solo fam. I even bought the domain MessedUpOrigins.com through Squarespace. So if you were worried about getting your website the perfect name, Name, worry no more. And did I mention that all of these features are accessible in your browser? Because with Squarespace, you have the guarantee that you'll never have to download, patch, or install anything to use their services. I know, they sound pretty great, right? That's why I'm saying you should give it a shot. If you want to launch your passion project, there's really no better service out there. And by the way, you could try it out totally for free. Yeah, all you have to do is go to squarespace.com slash John Solo to start your free trial, then use coupon code John Solo to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Now back to the video. <sighs> I honestly don't know what eggnog is, but I love it. 
Solo fam, thank you so much for stopping by and watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned yourself a little something. Actually, I'd be pretty pissed if you got to this point and didn't learn anything at all. I said a lot of smart stuff back there. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons, especially if you want to see more content like this in your sub box and recommendation feed. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram because YouTube doesn't want to tell my subscribers when I upload, which means I need a way to. And apparently, Gunther needs a way to tell you when he wants a treat. At least, that's what he told me so go follow him too i have a question do you want a treat i'll be seeing you all again next week with an extra special messed up episode about charles dickens's the christmas carol yeah we're finally doing it until then my name is john solo and remember john shot first